past was for our company, Tampa Bay Boston. Um, so as affiliate marketers and internet marketers, we're constantly looking for new ways to monetize all of the stuff that we've already done in a different way. So for instance, Tampa Bay is awesome. And if you have St. Pete is awesome. You can order peachy sauce. If you have nurses and nurses, we've got tons of Facebook pages with hundreds of thousands and millions of followers. So, um, so what we were discovering was we're sending traffic to a lot of places. Times puts out an article, we share it, we just generated a couple thousand visits to their site. You know, great job. Joe. That's the, thanks for the good work. So we were really just kind of pondering what could we do. And really, right now, the only way that you're making money in the internet marketing world is just affiliate marketing. So if, what's your name, sir? Tim. So if Tim has a product and I've got an audience that might want that product, I can send traffic to his site, and if they buy it, he's going to give me a commission. Sponsorship, um, you can have ads on your site. It was very, you know, you're, you're making it happen. But there's all these other people that are kind of making it happen for you if they're sharing your content. So, what we discovered was um, with our nursing page actually, is there were a few websites that were allowing us to share their content and earn 50% of the ad revenue that was created as a result of it. So, we were just, all right, let's try this out. Um, the site didn't have a lot of nursing information, which was the page that we were trying to use for it, but we made like 300 bucks sharing a handful of posts, so we were just like, we need to go find more of these sites that we can share content from. Couldn't find any sites, they were like, let's go find a tool and get it to go on other sites that we want to share content from. We couldn't find a tool, so we were just like, let's build a tool. We, you know, basically, you're going to create an entirely new way for internet marketers and content publishers to earn revenue. So if, let's say, Tim has a website, this one needs it right now. We're bald, so we can like, envy the hair that we have here. Um, let's say Tim has a website, he just put out great content, and Susie over here has a social audience that really likes the different types of content that Tim's putting out. What we basically created was a system that now She's able to share links from Tim's website. Our system is tracking those links and it's tracking the ad revenue that's created from it. So now Tim has a ton more website traffic and Susie has a whole new way of monetizing the audience that before she might have been doing some different marketing and some sales, but now it's really kind of switched the game on her. Now she can invest in building her audience to do lots of other things, but now she can make a lot more money. Um, we have a partner that has an I Love Dogs page got about a million people. You know, they make about five to seven hundred dollars a day sharing other people's content. You know, I'm really good at building audiences. I hate creating website content. It's just super time consuming. But there are millions of people that love doing that. There's no shortage of websites that have really, really great niche content, and there's no shortage at all of people with you know hundreds of thousands of millions of Twitter followers and Facebook pages with tens of thousands of millions of so what we're really trying to do is get those people to get connected. Um, they get to split the revenue. That's the way that the revenue model works is, so our system is in So our system is tracking all the revenue that's coming in. So what we did is we kind of made it like a 50-50, but each month we're kind of ponying up 10% to be a part of the network because we're now going to get this whole network of influencers connected with this whole group of content publishers. So we're kind of taking a little bit off the top there, but we also look at it as, you know, the system wasn't incredibly complex to build. We know that there's going to be some other competition. What can we do to kind of prevent that? Is we created a 40% affiliate marketing residual on this. We wanted to make it so absurd that people in the internet marketing world and the affiliate marketing world could invest in ads to build this network and still make a ton of money doing it. So let's say that I'm an affiliate marketer and I referred Tim into this system, you know, of the 10% that's gonna to come to us out of that percentage, I'm getting 4% of that as the affiliate marketer. If you have more questions about that percentage breakout, but I'm getting that every month. So as someone that has a big audience and a lot of people that are publishing content, I'll get everybody into here and then get a little bit of just kind of ongoing mailbox money marketers is kind of the whole objective of what we work on. Um, 
So really what we're looking for at this point is introductions to people producing content. You know, the way that this system's working is the, pub the content publishers have to be running Google AdSense. So if they're running Google Display ads on their website, that's really where that revenue is coming from. Um, introductions to other social influencers. So if you know people with Facebook pages or Twitter pages that have lots of people, um, we're getting them connected with other sites that they can share the content from. And then anybody that you know in the kind of affiliate marketing world. So that's really my, my spiel. Thank you for having me out.
So we can keep track of all of the, the content that's producing the best um, return on investment there as far as the shares. We can show the most popular content in different categories. So yeah, we compile all that information. And Is that data that you provide to influencers? Absolutely. The more you post these types of uh, articles and content, the more your followers are going to be interested. Absolutely. So if someone comes in and they fill out, you know, what categories are they specifically interested in? So they say they're interested in pets. They'll get an email say, hey, this is the best performing content over the last week for pets. Go share that, and then they can see all the other stuff. And they can see that based on all the different links that they're sharing as well, what their potential revenue may be. So again, I apologize if this is a super ignorant topic. But going back to what that gentleman said there, if I'm an influencer and a million people follow my Instagram, and I want to share some content, is there some way through any of those networks that your system is just creating a pass-through page between clicking on that content through the original yeah. provider so that Instagram or Twitter or whoever isn't the one capturing that? You were um, well, Instagram's not capturing anything. I mean, Facebook, they're capturing their own data, but if, let's say you're in the system and you are looking through you know, XYZ website and you, you know, see that this is the best performing content, Yes, right now it doesn't have this particular feature, but you will be able to just see the content that's performing best and click post now or schedule, and then it'll just put it into a queue and go out to your audience. So like something that you want to. What food suite or whatever. It would have a food suite like function, yeah. Okay, so I'm just a little unclear. Uh, so is, are you creating, so it's a few questions, man. So where are you at? Um, like have you launched or anything? Yeah. And um, are you, is this, is this like a platform that you manage Ago, uh, just about four weeks ago. Fortunately, everything is working. Everything's tracking very well right now, so we're super excited. Money is being made. Um, really, what it does, all it needs to happen is with the content publishers, we have to connect to their Google Analytics because that's really where the tracking of the ad revenue and the traffic is coming from. So they give us the ability to read and analyze, and we only pull a, a very specific amount of data from that, and then it integrates into our system so that both parties are able to log in see the traffic that was created yesterday, see the ad revenue that was created yesterday, and kind of see the performance and everything. So it's not even a plugin. We are going to, in a, probably the second or third phase, have like a Chrome plugin, something like that. So when you're in your browser, if you know you're on a site that is using this tool, you can just, you know, the little tool and it'll start scheduling for you there. So there's, there's no shortage of like cooler ideas that we can monetize later on.
some content, yes. I mean, some content, no. We I mean, made $200 on a post yesterday just because it kind of went viral. You know, you never, you never know which ones are going to be the be the hitter. Who controls the money flow? Is today the publisher is is getting paid by Google AdSense. So how do you capture those fees? Absolutely. And Great question. So, right now, the money flow does go from Google to the content publisher. There's no way for us to get around that because that's the that's where the revenue is actually coming from. So at the end of the month, the content publisher receives an invoice for getting it connected to be an ACH transfer, and the publishers that we have on board are like, yeah, that would be fine. Um, so presently, the money goes to you, the content publisher, you get a check from Google or a direct deposit on or around the 21st of the month, as they say on their site. Um, and then you just release the, the funds that are publisher refuses to pay it, they get dropped? Yes, we, that's kind of the only recourse that we have at this point. Um, we're kind of looking at where, because obviously, yeah, if, if the publisher made 10 grand this month, we owe five to people outside of it, we're kind of on hook for that. So that is one kind of like little gaping hole that we, we're constantly figuring out. And if anyone has an idea on, on addressing that, we would love to. And it's, it's not a lot different from other affiliate models, but at this at that point, those people are taking in the revenue directly. You know, so we're kind of like in this third party state. Um, the way that we're kind of looking at mitigating it would be actually the sites are managing their own, which is, they're not really doing anything, they're still using it the same way, but they have the ownership of the whole process works. So they're actually clicking release of the money and then our, our system just dispersing it. Is there anything proprietary to what you are trying to do? Or is there software? Any, no. Any what would prevent uh, Google to come into what you're doing? Absolutely. Implementing this as a feature? Don't uh, tell Google this, but they kind of should have done this when they started it. I mean, it would have been a no-brainer for them because then everybody that's using AdSense would have already had this inherently in their system. And then they would have just been able to say, hey, if you, you know, see sites running AdSense, you can be an affiliate of any site running AdSense. So, our big goal is to ramp this up as fast as possible and hopefully Google locks on our door and says, hey, we want to give you some money. Um, so there is a risk for it. At this point, you know, if that happened, it would, it would suck, but it, we're almost initially built this to facilitate our own sites. Um, we've got content and we've got lots of audiences, so if we can ride that out for a while and help some other people get on board and, and earn some money from it too, but at least it's helping us increase our revenue. So. If you build it, just leverage it a little bit. Do you have other users that are not using your own network? Absolutely. We've got about 20 other users right now. We've got 10 content publishers. Um, so the biggest need, you know, we're in that chicken or egg kind of scenario, you know, just trying to get more content publishers. Um, we're really fortunate down here in St. Pete, I don't know if you know, but I mean, the Penny Order, um, Kyle, super awesome guy, so we're, we're talking with them. I mean, that would be just kind of an awesome plug for us. They've got millions and millions of views and they're they're kind of a big deal. They're publishing tons of content. So it would then help us kind of launch a little bit more and drive a ton more influencers and help increase their revenue and, and their traffic as well. So those types of sites, but you know, recipe sites, if you know anybody that's just blogging about recipes, those are super easy to drive traffic to, you know, pets are fun, but any niche content. Um, we're trying to get connected with like the Times and the Business Journal. We're going to be doing stuff with 83 Degrees because we've got a huge local social network. So we'd like to share their content a lot more often. Um, those those would be wonderful concepts. Yes, sir. So you know, you, assuming this has a shelf, right? You know, assuming Google picks out or buys yeah. you or, or whatever, um, you will at least have in this database of all. Is there other stuff that you guys are working on doing with that information? Absolutely. I mean, there's there's so many things. I mean, just the whole affiliate marketing side of it. We have a huge database of people with you know lots and lots of followers on any social media platform. There's other products and services, and, you know, trainings that they want to be a part of. You know, so we are going to be affiliates with lots of different stuff. We very selectively make that aware to those those people. Um, same thing on the content publisher side. So there's probably like ten other revenue streams that we thought of if, while people are using the system to kind of you know, get them some additional education and exposure and, and ways to 
monetize their audience even a bit more. And are you find, helping people on either side find those ads? So the ads, all that they do is, uh, if you're a content publisher and you want to use Google, Google's ad network, you just sign up and they approve your site and they give you code. And you just go put that code in your site and it's running ads. It's running ads based on retargeting, so if anyone's ever logged on to like a shoe site, and then you're like, why the hell do these shoes follow me around everywhere else I go? That's, that's retargeting, so that's what's happening. And that's what's happening in those display ads on other sites. And you can be selective and you can exclude certain categories from running on your site. So you just get, you know, as a publisher connected with Google, they give you the stuff, you're good to go. Um, the big scheme if Google did, you know, whether they just, bypass us and create their own or buy us or whatever, you know, we're still building lots of other audiences, so if they did kind of just take it over, we'll at least retain all of our audiences that we personally built and be able to just not lose a step and then use their system instead. Um, we would, however, lose our, you know, the other stuff, but it could happen. Yeah. So, yes, sir. What, what is your background? How did you come to these ideas? Um, I've been building really large social audiences for about eight years. Um, we've got a few hundred thousand in Tampa Bay. We've got various other concepts of pages. So when we discovered that this wasn't happening, my partners, fortunately, are web engineers. So I didn't have to raise a ton of money to go get all this development done. I just was like, go do this, guys. It could totally make some money. And uh, they got to work, and a few months later, we're, we're up and running and rolling. So I'm a big nerd. And my, my goes somewhere totally different from, so forgive me. Um, when you're describing this database, it looks to me like a graph. Are you familiar with graph theories? Uh, so where, where in the graph and the connection between these entities do you make your money? So let's say I sent 1,000 people to Tim's site, mm -hmm. and $100 was made. So at the end of the month, Tim's gonna receive a check from Google for $100. Mm -hmm. He's gonna send us 60, because we're gonna invoice for 60 bucks. If he's getting $40, as an influencer, I'm getting $40, and Rev Spread the Tool is gonna to get 20. Okay. So we're getting 10% from each side. So the entities involved are Tim, mm -hmm. Rev Spread, Google, and there's relationships and between social those entities yeah. and the social link influencer. And that money that goes from Tim, no, goes from Google to Tim, gets routed to you through an invoice process. So you have an invoicing relationship with Tim. He gives you your cut, okay? And then you share that with your content creator where you have a relationship on that edge. Okay, you got it. And that we're gonna direct, we're gonna direct deposit or pay for PayPal, I mean, or a check, and we have either copy. So, yes sir. So what can we as a community do to help you promote this? If you know social influencers or you know people that are just producing content that you know, want some more traffic, that are local sites or any kind of sites at all, those would be really fantastic. So thank you so much.